What's up guys, welcome back to Classic Octane. I am Taylor. We are back to, um, on the Barn to Brat project this week. I'm hoping to finish up some more wiring and see what else we can get into. Let's do it. So as you can see, we are back working in the garage, which means the Camaro is in the driveway. Um, so that means the disc brake swap is totally done on that car, finally. I uh, did a four-wheel disc brake conversion on it. Uh, ran into some issues, some my fault, some design flaw in the uh, kit. I'll go over all of that in a separate video. Uh, but the good news is we can get that out of here. Now I can <laughs> set aside a day to totally clean this thing. Um, I have some updates I want to make to the shop. I'll include that in a video too. But today, um, I wanted to actually throw the battery in here, hook everything up, and start to actually test um, the different systems. Check and make sure the headlights working, all the switches, the um, signals. I don't have the LED flasher relay, um, so I won't actually be able to test my LED lights. So I'll probably throw some stock incandescent signals in there uh, so that we can check and make sure all that's working properly. We'll upgrade to LED later. Depending on how all of that goes, um, part of me wants to throw the exhaust on, um, and try and fire it up. It's been a while since this bike has run, uh, since we started taking stuff apart. I haven't run it with the new jets or anything, and I'm really curious to see how that exhaust sounds. Uh, don't hold me to that. I don't know that we're going to get to that in this video, but we'll at least start diving into the wiring. If you guys, uh, remember from before, I am using a, um, Shorai, S-H-O-R-A-I, however in the world you pronounce that. Uh, battery, uh, here's the part number, if you guys are interested. So this is a lithium ion battery um, that has enough cold cranking amps to use the electric start, 210 cold cranking amps. Um, so I'm pretty excited about that and we'll see how it works. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and connect it up. I've double checked everything. I have my fuses still hanging out over here because I haven't mounted that yet and I wanna make sure those don't short on anything. Um, I have the power wire right here, ground is there. Uh, these use these cool little um, like foam on the back of square nuts um, so that you can slide this in and it actually holds the little square nut into the mounting. Uh, makes it really easy. So I'm actually going to mount this one kind of on the top of the battery and this one on the side just because that's the way these connectors work the best. So I'm going to hook that up and then we'll flip the key and hope we don't see any magic smoke. Got the battery all hooked up. Uh, these things come charged. I just checked it. It's at 13 volts, um, which is even higher than I would expect it to be. Um, let me just check it again. Yeah, 13.2. So right around 13. Um, so yeah, a little higher than I expected, but I'll take it. Um, if these ever die, you can't really use a standard battery charger. You need a specific uh, lithium ion battery uh, charger. I picked this one up on Amazon. Um, there's always a, my affiliate link for Amazon in the description. So if you're ever curious about any of the parts or anything I use, uh, for this battery charger, it's pretty cheap, works great, uh, and it's on that list. So click that link in the description if you want to go check that out. Uh, we're going to flip the key and see what happens. Okay. No loud pops. No smoke. It's a good sign. Uh, my oil light is on, which is exactly what I would expect it. Obviously, there's low oil pressure if the engine's not running. Um, let me see if the headlight works. Okay. <laughs> first high beam, low beam. First problem to diagnose, headlight doesn't work. Um, so let's keep going. Horn, Beep. horn works. Can't test the signals yet. Um, neutral light. Neutral light, no worky. Um, cool. I mean, <laughs> one out of three things is not all that cool, but let's, uh, I'm gonna grab my power probe. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, I'll show you what it is. Uh, and we'll start checking stuff off the list. So here's the power probe. If you're not familiar with what these are, they are 
uh, the best diagnostic tool um, ever, in my opinion. So basically there's two alligator clips on this side that we're gonna hook to the battery. Pick them up super easy. We'll get a little noise. So that shows that, oh, and I broke it. That shows that our power probe is on. So now, anywhere we touch on the end of this, we can check if it has power, we can check if it has ground, we can check how many volts it's getting. Um, so if I just like touch it on something that's ground, the little green plus sign shows up. If I check it on something that has power, uh, the little red plus um, turns on. So green minus is ground, red plus is, so I'm getting 13.2 volts, same as what we measured um, over there. The next awesome thing is by clicking this button, you can throw the full battery voltage to the end of this probe. So while we're testing this headlight, so right now the headlight should be on, it should be on low beam, uh, which if I'm not mistaken is this white wire. Yeah, we're getting no power to the headlight bulb at all. So I'm gonna turn on high beam, nothing. So what I can show you is if I throw power to this white wire, headlight bulb comes on, turn off. So this is letting us test the fact that our headlight bulb works. It's a problem with the wiring. We'll try the high beam circuit. High beams on as well. That looks a little faint, but uh, it does work. So we know the problem is with our wiring, not with the bulb itself. So this thing is invaluable for checking uh, switches and all kinds of components. Um, like I said, I'm in love with it. Also in uh, the link in the description. So we know our headlight is not getting power. Let's uh, trace it and see where the problem is. So what I'm finding up here at the headlight is I'm getting um, decent voltage up here. So I turn the switch on, I'm getting 12 volts on the low beam. Yeah, 12 volts high beam. So the problem is I'm not getting a very good ground at all. So what we need to do is figure out where in the world, see it should show up like this, a green negative with a good ground. So not getting a good ground. So what I'm gonna do is start to track back um, to see where our ground um, connects. So the solid, the negative battery cable goes straight to the frame of the bike. So that's why anywhere on the frame should be grounded, but we need a connection from all of these green wires, uh, which is common ground on these old Hondas, uh, to the frame as well. So let me show you what I found by the ignition coil. So I was back here looking at the ignition coil because there is a green ground wire that goes right to the frame here. And I'm getting like a very intermittent ground. See, look, I'm not even moving it and that light's barely flashing. If you look over here, this ear should be mounted to the frame and there's this metal um, wire right here that's supposed to ground it. So you see how solid the ground is? Um, if I can get my thing to stay still. Uh, right there and this sh ear should be mounted through this hole. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a bolt mount that up and I uh, trust that that'll at least get us closer to having a, a good ground in the whole system. So I threw a new bolt through that, flip my key. Hey, what do you know? We got a high beam, low beam headlight and it's way brighter. It's funny how grounds make a difference. Neutral light still doesn't work. Um, we already tried the horn. So, hell, let's dive into the neutral light. Uh, if you guys aren't familiar with how those work, basically it's powered um, on one side, so we'll check and make sure it has power. Uh, common key on power, or black wires on the classic Hondas, uh, then is grounded through a switch in this side cover right here. So before I go digging around, I wanna actually make sure that the bulb is good. Um, so the easy way to do that is I grabbed the wiring diagram, and then I found out that um, yes, it uses this black power. Um, basically, I just uh, pulled uh, the little wire out and just kind of followed through to the bundle of wires from the uh, little instrument cluster, we'll call it. Um, so that this black wire right here is, uh, should be powered up for that cluster. 
And then the light green with a red stripe is the um, ground wire that runs down to the switch that's actually on the shifter itself. So the power probe has this little extra wire here that's just always grounded. So I can ground in here. And then if I throw power to this black wire, if our bulb is good, it should light up. And that's taking the switch out of the equation. So we'll go right directly to it. Hit the plus. See, we're not, we're not actually not getting anything um, at the light. So that makes me think the bulb is actually just bad. So let's go up here, pull uh, the top out and see if the, just the bulb is bad and we can swap that out. So you can just slide the uh, little bulb carrier right out of the bottom there. This is the bulb I pulled out, totally black, which is a good indication that it's blown. Um, so to test them, it's pretty easy. You can just use the ground clamp on a power probe, clamp around the outside of the bulb, and then throw power to that little nub in the middle. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that to this one real quick and we'll make sure it works. Show you guys what I'm talking about. So I'm just gonna flip over the ground, try and get it clamped on the outside there and then take this, put it on the end, and then hit the plus button. So you can see that this bulb is good. Let's test the one we pulled out. Clamp around the outside. Hit the plus button. Oh, nothing. Shot off, but who cares? It doesn't work anyway. So let's throw this bulb in. I'm gonna clean a little of the corrosion off, and then we'll see if our neutral light magically comes back. Got our bulb back in, now we'll flip our key. Hey, what do you know? Take it out of neutral. Put it back in. So we see just a simple bulb swap. That's exactly why we test the bulbs first instead of diving into the side of the bike because uh, we would have fixed all that up and it still wouldn't have worked because the damn bulb was burned out. Cool. Let's uh, move on. Next up, I want to uh, test the turn signal wiring. Uh, this is the kind of stuff you guys come to this channel for. Look at this custom turn signal mounts I mean shoot look at that um, so basically what I did is just hooked one side to uh, the, com the green common ground and then uh, sky blue for one side orange for the other uh, based off the wiring diagram and cool so I'll turn the key on and we'll uh, start with left boom getting that I can hear the obviously the flasher relay working Go to the right, that's working, show you guys, and you can probably hear a little flash relay down there working. Um, I might also just temporarily move those lights back here um, so we can test this rear wiring. I don't have any reason to think it won't work, but I'd rather know for sure. So we'll go ahead and switch those lights to the back and give it another test. No shortage of uh, custom engineering uh, on the mounts back here as well. Stock rear fender. I don't even know. This might even be this bike's stock rear fender. I lose track at this point. Um, so, turn the key on. Nothing happens. I think that that's good. Um, let's check the tail light. So, we'll turn the headlight on. Okay. Okay. Had lights on, that's good. Um, go for the brake. Oh yeah. Got brake lights. Go for the rear brake. Okay. That doesn't, that doesn't, oh, this uh, rear brake switch is like totally seized. Okay, so that, is that working? No. Um, okay, so the rear brake, Switch is a problem, um, noted. Let's turn this off. Let's go for right signal. Good, front still flashing, turn signal indicator still flashing. Left, sweet. So everything works. Um, let's dive into the rear brake switch. See what the heck is broken. So if you're not familiar with how these rear switches work, basically this piece stays still this spring connects to the rear brake lever and then it pulls down this little plunger. And what that's doing is just a simple two wire switch. So you have black, which like I mentioned earlier is a key on power, uh, then a green with a yellow stripe, which is what sends power to uh, the brake light. 
So basically what we're looking for here is to make sure that uh, we have power at this black wire with the key on. If we do, then we'll go over here and check and see if that power transfers to this green wire when we uh, pull that plunger down and kind of simulating the brake going down. Uh, we can also use the power probe, like I've mentioned a hundred times, um, to skip it and make, and then you know check the rest of the wiring from here. So let's go ahead and um, turn the key on and test it. Got you guys back up on the tripod so I can use both my hands. So key on, front switch still turns on our brake light. Um, so let's check this black wire. Yep, getting 12 volts. Um, pull apart this connection. Pull this down. Yeah, that doesn't seem to be working. Um, here, let's do this. Let's throw the full 12 volts um, to this wire. Okay. So if you can see, let me turn you guys. When I throw power, our brake light's working. So we know that, um, and sorry for the shake, shake cam, um, we know that if the power was going through this switch properly that everything would work. So the problem is internal to our switch. Um, let's see if we can take it apart. This is what the switch looks like pulled apart. And this is the part that's supposed to make contact. Um, no wonder it's not working. That thing is gross. So again, I'm just going to clean that off, scrub everything down, give everything a light, um, you know, scratch with uh, some sandpaper. And like I said, put it back together. And got it all back together. Um, I was able to free up the little spring in there as well. So now it springs back up uh, out of position. Turn on our key. Oh, the spring fell out. Um, give it a little pull. Boom. Brake light working. So we'll go ahead and put this back on. Shouldn't really need to adjust it. If you need to, there's just like a little plastic kind of lock nut that just sets the height so that it's pulling enough when it's, you know, the brake pedal's down, but it's not overextending it or anything like that. So throw so it's back on and we'll move on from there. So really just the last thing to test is going to be the start button and uh, that we still have spark. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and turn the key on. Um, I have the kill switch in. I'll go to off first. Hit it and see if it turns over. Yep. Um, then we'll turn it to on. Hold up our spark plug against the head. Try it again. And we got spark. Very cool. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for uh, this video. I think we got a lot done. Um, there's a lot more kind of uh, <laughs> diagnostic work on the wiring um, than I thought there was gonna be, but that's good. That's really good content that, you know, kind of teaches you guys how I go through the process of, um, you know, testing things and figuring out if it's a switch, if it's ground, if it's power. And I mean, we had like five or six different things and we're able to get them all sorted and walk you through. So I'm happy, uh, I'm happy with that. Um, on the next episode, I want to, I need to pressure wash the engine, get a little bit more of this grease and grime off. I want to put the exhaust on for the final time. I want to go ahead and swap out the chain. Um, basically get the bike uh, to the point where we can start it. Um, Hell, I'm just going to say it. In the next video, we're going to start the thing up and see what it sounds like uh, with the new exhaust and uh, see how the new um, jets are doing and, and all that kind of stuff. So I'm really excited. This bike's coming along nicely. I um, hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, make sure to like, subscribe, comment, all of that stuff that everybody, all the YouTubers say. I'll mention it one last time. Um, the tools I was using, Power Probe and everything, are in that affiliate link. That link does really help out a lot uh, to support the channel. It doesn't cost you guys any more to buy things from there, uh, but I do get a percentage of, of the Amazon sales. So um, if you like the channel and, and want to buy one of those tools and you follow that link, I'd greatly appreciate it. Um, a lot of people are turning on that sponsor um, button too. Uh, I'm super torn. I don't. I've had a few of you guys reach out and ask about it. I'm not one to like ask for free money, um, but let me know what you guys think is like, if I turned it on, I mean, it's not asking, it's not like saying, oh, please, you know, help me out. It's more of a, hey, if you like what you see and you want to help support the builds and uh, do bigger and better projects and different bikes and like kind of keep the channel going, 
um, you know, it could do that too. So basically, long story short, let me know if anybody would be interested in the subscribe button. Um, but no, if I don't hear from anybody, I'm totally cool with that. So don't think I'm um, you know, asking for it or, or begging for it, so to speak. So um, cool. We'll see you guys uh, next week with some more Barnabrat.